Woo, look at this thing. All right, so kill switch on and headlight on, and you should get some flashing green lights up here. Put your, uh, no, the headlight switch is this one. Oh, okay. There you go. And uh, that way you got your power meter. That shows your power output. The motor can motor temperature if it gets up to 230 degrees it'll go into um, thermal cutback so it limits the amount of power available okay it helps conserve the motor so it doesn't get too hot and there's your battery percentage and your range the only way you'll get 34 miles out of these if you do a hyper miling about 20 miles an hour over flat oh geez <laughs> so it's a bit deceiving huh yeah well cool so I'm ready, All you, it's ready, huh? It's ready to go. All you gotta do is twist the throttle. It's gonna go. Cool. All right, what's up, everybody? So today I got the opportunity to uh, take a test ride on an electric bike that a buddy of mine has. In fact, he has two of them. They're both uh, Bramo and Nurses. Uh, one's a 2009, one's a 2010. And uh, it was a nice sunny day today in Oregon, and uh, he messaged up on Facebook, said, hey, anybody wants to take one of these Brambles out on a ride with me, hit me up. So I took him up on the offer, and uh, it was pretty cool. I just uh, figured I'd post up a little bit of thoughts on the bike in case uh, anyone was interested. And uh, one thing I will say is I, I had my new Senna GP10 backpack installed on my GoPro when I shot this footage and uh, I didn't care for the case that the Senna comes with so I modified um, an existing GoPro case and used a jumper wire to connect the backpack to the GoPro and apparently jumper wires don't work um, it comes with a connector and I just assumed it was mini uh, USB to mini USB so uh, I tried a connector and it turns out I didn't get any voice um, the noise you're hearing is coming from uh, the GoPro mic, and that's pretty much it. So, and I believe it's partially covered um, in this setup I had. So, pretty minimal um, as far as uh, narration was concerned. So, unfortunately, I had to dub this over the top. But uh, I'll just kind of give you my thoughts on the bike while you look at footage here. Um, so, those who don't know, Baramo is a electric bike company. They're located in Ashland, Oregon, which happens to be just uh, about seven miles from where I live. So I might have a little bit easier access to them than the average person, but they are starting to crop up more and more. Um, if you have a bike shop around you that happens to get um, any of the Bramo bikes in for a demo, I recommend uh, trying it. I mean, it's if you haven't ridden an electric bike before, I mean, it's worth it just for the sheer novelty of it, if anything else. Um, but some of the stuff I liked about it, um, I guess first and foremost, I was happy that it rode and handled uh, like a motorcycle should. Um, uh, you know, I would compare it similar to maybe a, you know, a, a small CC dual sport, something like that. It's a very upright riding position. Um, it's comfortable, uh, it handles great. Uh, and and I was I was kind of worried. I mean, when you look at it, it, it kind of almost looks like you know I wouldn't, wouldn't say a scooter, but it's got that look that you're like, no, what is this? I mean, but I can tell you when you're when you're out there on the road and you're doing 45, 55 through corners, I mean, it's it's a motorcycle, and uh, it's it's got some heft to it. It's it's 325 pounds, I think. Um, so it's got some weight to it. The weight's fairly low. I mean, it, it handles really well. Um, you know, it's got the dirt bike style bars on it. Uh, the mirrors are, you know, pretty much worthless, like a lot of motorcycles are, but uh, the, the motorcycle mirrors are. And, uh, but, but all in all, I mean, it's, you know, all the switches are in the right spot. I mean, one thing I found myself doing was obviously reaching for a clutch that wasn't there. So, you know, it's, it's hard to get used to, like, you don't have to worry about shifting the clutch. It's just, you know, you just turn the throttle and go. And, uh, so that, that was a big plus to me. Um, it had very good power delivery just in the fact that, you know, if you let off the throttle, it would coast very well. Um, there was no kind of uh, engine braking going on that a normal bike has, especially a V-twin that, you know, where you, 
you. If you're off the gas, you're basically, it's almost like hitting the brakes. This thing, that's not the case. I mean, you let off the gas and it pretty well coasts, and then if you want to get back up on the gas and you hit it, it it's real seamless. It just picks right up and, and goes. Um, I thought that was really cool, too. Um, you know, it's a neat experience to just be out on a, on a country road riding and, and only, you know, uh, hearing wind and, and a chain and some tires and a little bit of, of a hum from the engine but, uh, or from the motor, but uh, it's definitely a different experience. Uh, it beats being in a car, that's for sure, and uh, pretty cool. Um, it has great brakes on it, and the front brakes were, uh, I believe it does have Brembo brakes. Front brakes were great, um, back brakes were okay, but all you really care about is the front. Uh, very comfortable seating position. Like I said, uh, it took me a little bit to get used to how far forward the foot pegs were. I, I had trouble finding them. Um, both my Ducati and my FJR both uh, have the rear sets a little bit further back, so it was a different style of uh, excuse me, it's a different style of riding, but um, once you got used to it, it's pretty comfortable. Um, the seat, on the other hand, wasn't. You know, I told him it's lucky you only get about 25 miles out of these because that's about the longest I want to be on that seat. Um, but all in all, that's 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 the things I liked about it. So, as far as stuff that, uh, you know, I could probably uh, improve, which Bramo has improved on, so which is good, but it's, it's definitely not a powerhouse by any means. Um, there's times in the video I'll try to catch... Uh, post a visual aid to when I was doing it, but there was times where I was rolling about 30, 35, and I would hammer the throttle back as far as I could just to see how the acceleration was, and I mean, it was literally like 40, 45, 50, 50, I mean, it was, you know, maybe it's a little bit unfair that I rode over there on a, a Yamaha FJR 1300, and you hop off and you hop on something that, you know, is nowhere near the same league as far as horsepower, but in the end, you know, it's definitely not a powerhouse. It'll get you where you need to go, and it's, it zips along decently, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's not going to pop a wheel or anything like that, that's for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the range was something that would probably be my drawback in getting it, and... and well, our ride today was a touch over 20 miles, and we were started to get worried there that we weren't going to make it back. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting. The battery said it was, you know, at like 12%, but then as we kept going of about half mile, mile up the road, it had raised again up to 14%. So um, one thing you'll notice is once you're over 50, 55 on these things, um, the battery, um, you can watch the battery usage on the, on the dash, and it, it definitely starts depleting rapidly. Um, at higher speeds so um, a range of 25 miles I mean that starts making it tough I mean you know my that would be pushing on whether I can make it like to my job and back for instance so you'd almost have to get to work and charge up while you're there um, if you do run the battery out it's about three minutes to fully charge I mean three minutes three hours to fully charge it so uh, that's a pretty big issue. Um, the seat was pretty uncomfortable, and uh, you know the price tag's up there. I, I think new they're about eight to nine thousand. Um, that's up there. I mean, you can get a pretty nice two hundred and fifty or three hundred cc standard motorcycle that gets you know sixty miles a gallon uh, for for more than half for less than half that. So you know that makes the sale a little bit tougher. Um, if you can pick them up used, though, for instance, you know the one I think it was the white one in this video that. Uh, that my buddy had for sale has for sale right now and you know I think he wants about 3800 bucks for it and something like that it would definitely be worth considering um, any more than that you know when you start talking new at eight and nine thousand you know that's it's up there um, but they're supposedly you know they're they're pretty much they say the batteries you get about a good 10 years out of them of regular riding before they start to deteriorate they, they start losing some of their pep and uh, you might want to think about a change but um, other than that, I mean, it, it, they look a little funny, but I, I think the looks are halfway decent decent on the inertias. I mean, they kind of have that. They kind of remind me of all of the scramblers that are coming out now. They sort of have a scrambler look to them. Um, there's no mistake in this motorcycle. I joked in the video, but you couldn't hear. I was curious if any of the Harley riders I saw were going to wave at us because 
were on these little electric bikes. But uh, you know, it's 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 a motorcycle. You can tell it's a motorcycle. And uh, all in all, it was an enjoyable experience. I recommend if you get a chance to ride one to do it. Uh, uh, lots of fun. I really really like to thank my buddy Stuart for uh, letting me try it out. Uh, so hopefully this video helps. Uh, if you have any questions, if uh, I can't answer it. I can always ask Stuart. He can probably help us out. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. That's pretty cool. Until next time. Really stable too. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. I was expecting like a scooter feel, but it's solid. I mean, it's a motorcycle. It's just. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool.